These are the two things that make USC calibration very different from other headphones calibrations, for example, Sonarworks or Morphe. Number one, this is unit specific calibration, which means that every unit is measured and the calibration is tailored to that specific unit. That's really, really cool. And second thing is you get a data set that you can export and use outside of the DAW, outside of our USC plugin. You can actually integrate it with real phones, waves as well, but also any third party plugin and directly in the audio interface. That's really, really cool. Coming up. If you are new to all audio and you don't know what the USC actually is, it's a calibration for our headphones and it's made out of two components. So one component is the actual plugin, which you can install with your DAW. You just insert it wherever you want. And second component is actually a data set. It's a file with all the calibration data that you can use with our plugin or with other plugins as well, but you can actually manually export that uh, data and use it directly with the audio interface. That's great, Rock, but what does the calibration actually do? Well, it eliminates the tolerances in materials. For example, with the ear pads, there aren't two that are exactly alike, or speaker units, there aren't two that are exactly alike. So with calibration of every single unit, we can remove those tolerances in materials to make sure that every unit is calibrated and sounds perfect. But we can actually extend that even further and even fix a little bit the frequency response to match the target perfectly. So you will have the flattest possible monitoring headphones ever. Here's our recommended channel setup for uh, multi-channel audio interfaces. Also in my case, uh, right here I'm using a Motu Monitor 8 um, and they have a software that comes with it uh, which is enabling the routing of the signals. So now I can send one signal from one channel inside the DAW directly into the interface and then the interface routing capabilities will dis distribute uh, this signal to multiple outputs. So over here I have, uh, like, uh, I can actually show that. I'm using uh, output number three and four as the stereo out, and I can see it over here uh, on the interface itself, and it's actually pushing the signal out to main left and right. And then I have the, uh, the aux signaling set up to send that same signal to all the other outputs that are over here. Uh, on the interface itself. So what that gives me is the opportunity to actually go into the different outputs that I have over here. So you can see the main output, which would be uh, my speakers in, in this scenario. And then I have multiple headphones um, that could be connected uh, directly to the monitor eight. Usually the audio interfaces will have one or two headphones out. That's one of the rare units uh, that has multiple headphones out. It's a headphones uh, distribution system, actually. So you do have speakers over here on the main, and then you have all the other outputs that you, you're using. And you can transfer directly over here into the EQ section of this, of this uh, interface output, the data itself, which means that you don't really need to have the plugin over here. Uh, you can just, you know, remove it <clears throat> like that. So now you have a clean mastering channel, which you're gonna use for exporting. So you don't have to worry about bypassing the calibration when you're exporting. Um, it's already gone. It's not in the way of the bouncing signal chain because you have it over here. To do that, you need to locate the XPS file, the calibration file, open it up with a text editor, and you'll see all the info or the correction, calibration data for your specific unit. 
and you can transfer that into any EQ, which means you can use the calibration outside of your door without any plugins directly on your monitoring output with your audio interface. So the workflow is completely seamless. There is no bypassing um, when you're exporting your files, for example. The main benefit is that you will have a calibrated monitoring regardless of using DAW or different projects inside uh, your DAW, regardless of using YouTube or Tidal or Spotify, whatever you're going to push out of your, uh, out of your uh, computer, it's going to be redirected, routed through the software of the audio interface to the correct channel and then also applying the calibration data. So for example, over here, if I uh, do this really quickly, just one maybe, so we have a low shelf at 90 Hertz, uh, Q 0.5 and gain one for a specific unit. So I can turn this on. I can do gain over here, which is one. Uh, frequency was 90 Hertz um, and it was 0.5. That is how you transfer the calibration data for your studio headphones directly to the audio interface so it will always be calibrated it doesn't matter what source you're using DAW, YouTube, Spotify, Tidal, whatever every time you're going to put your headphones on the signal is going to be rerouted correctly with the routing capabilities of your interface and calibrated every single time just a quick side note, if you are using your interface on multiple systems, if you are taking it with you to a different setup and then back again to your studio or home desk or whatever, I would recommend that you make a preset uh, for your mixing sessions so that you actually have only one time installation, one time setup and every time you're back at mixing, you just select the preset. Uh, for your whole audio interface workspace and you're ready to go. So now that we've covered the ideal scenario, let's look at a little bit less ideal, which means having the outputs directly inside your DAW and the calibration inside your DAW. To do that, you need to have multiple outputs enabled. So for example, I've added another output, which is called headphones out. And I have another output, which is called speakers out. So one is driving the headphones, one is driving the speakers. So now all the tracks that I make or put inside this project uh, will be sending things into buses. And I think you're us using buses anyway. So at the bus level, you can actually apply a send uh, to whatever output you want. So I will be sending this signal to the speakers and to the headphones uh, output at the same time. So you can see it over here, it's popping up. So now I have all the tracks that I would have inside uh, my DAW would go into different buses. I can have one for, for drums, one for guitars and so on. And that bus is then sending the signal uh, to the headphones output and to the speakers output. Obviously the final step is to drag in uh, the USC calibration plugin, ideally to the post section over here and then upload the calibration file. And there you go. You now have a calibrated uh, output, calibrated headphones on the headphones channel, uh, which gives you a little bit of control inside the door if you want to. But the funny thing about the USC plugin is you can drag it on to the speaker section as well. And in the speaker section, you can also import uh, this file and actually you can change it. So as this file is basically just, um, you know, a text based file, it's uh, essentially an XML um, database, you can go in and, you know, change whatever parameters, change the low shelf to a different number, change, um, you know, the amplitude to a different number and save that file under a different name. So for example, save it as speakers and then import that. I could, instead of using the headphones calibration, I could use some other calibration file that I've made based on 
the calibration data for my speakers. If you're doing measurements, you can take those measurements and calibration and insert them directly into this uh, USC plugin, which is very, very light. And that's one of the reasons why you might want to have that. So you can actually have just one USC running and you will have like a, your headphones calibration in one slot. And then you can have another calibration for another headphone or your own made um, adjustments or your speakers. Uh, so you can actually run one calibration software for speakers and headphones at the same time, which comes in handy if you're using small audio interfaces. For example, I don't know, uh, Focusrite, uh, Scarlett Editions or the SSL2, the small version of it. Um, they will only have one output, which is shared for speakers and headphones, which means if you want to change the calibration when you're mixing on, on the speakers, uh, all you need to do in that case is just click on here and run a different calibration. And when you're switching back to headphones, turn the volume down for the speakers directly on the interface and just change uh, the calibration over here to headphones. So you're always monitoring your projects with calibration regardless of using speakers or headphones. If your productions, if your workload is getting higher and scaling up, obviously you will need to have an audio interface with multiple channels to streamline your workflow and be more effective so that you can actually listen really quickly, you know, like a Spotify title or whatever song that you get in uh, as a reference maybe from your clients and at the same time run your DAW and have that calibrated as well so you don't have uh, you know, differences in monitoring the experience between DAW and, and Spotify. So obviously at that point, somewhere down the road of developing your career, you will need to have a multi-channel uh, output, um, you know, audio interface. So we do recommend that you always uh, install and use uh, the calibration data directly in the audio interface if you can. If you can't, then use the plugin um, either on uh, the headphones out and speaker out if you have like still this kind of uh, possibility or at least uh, try to have two different calibrations inside the plugin so that you can switch between headphones and speakers in cases or with audio interfaces that do share the output for speakers and headphones. So it's one output for both uh, monitoring devices. Um, yeah, I guess that concludes uh, this little uh, tutorial slash explainer of how to use calibration outside of your DAW. And that is a massive, massive um, difference in comparison to generic softwares, for example, Sonoworks or for example, uh, Morphit or Waves or, or other that are offering calibration uh, for headphones. Usually those things will only work inside the DAW and the calibration is far from the accuracy that we are actually offering. Until the next time, bye.